Hi guys, my name is Itisha and today in this video we are going to learn how to make this animated carousal in Swift UI. So in WWDC 2023, Apple introduced several improvements to Swift UI scroll views and using them I'll show you how easy it is to make such fascinating carousal. So let's jump onto Xcode and start building. So I've already set up this project and the images that we are going to use in our carousal, I've already put them in our assets with the name 1 to up to 5. So the first thing that we are going to do here is to create an array of these these images so let's call it images and inside our array we will insert the name of the files that we have now as you know that whenever we want to make our content scrollable in Swift UI, we have to use scroll view so instead of this text I am going to use a scroll view over here so by default the whatever content that is there inside the scroll view gets scrolled in a vertical direction but since I want my images to get scrolled horizontally that is against the x axis so i will provide axis as horizontal now inside it we'll create a lazy h stack instead of lazy h stack we could have used a normal h stack as well the difference between the two is in case of lazy h stack the container does not load the view until they are visible or almost visible however in case of normal regular stacks like h stack or v stack the container loads all the content at once regardless of the state of scrolling so uh, in case we have more images in our carousal it's always a better idea to use a lazy edge stack instead of regular edge stack now inside it we'll create a for each loop so that we can iterate through all the images in our array so here we'll provide our array that is images and we also have to provide a unique identifier to it so for now we are using self over here that means the actual value of each element will act as a unique identifier and then we'll iterate through all the images in our array now for showing the image on our ui we will use this image component now you can see that all the images are getting displayed over here but they are getting too much stretched on the screen so the first thing that we are going to use here is our resizable modifier also we'll clip its shape to a rounded rectangle with a border radius so that all the images look similar so let's give it a corner radius of around say 20. you can see that still our images are getting stretched so one option that we have over here is to give it a frame modifier and specify a particular width so let's give it a width of say 400 okay now this is looking better but one problem that we have with giving a fixed width is let's uh, run this on the simulator and i'll show you what the problem is now in first glance it looks completely fine but say if we change the orientation of our simulator then what happens is this image does not adjust to the width of the screen that we have and instead our 400 width that is fixed is getting reflected but this is not what we want so instead what we can do is let me close this for now instead of using a fixed width over here with WWDC 2023 we were provided with a new modifier that is called container relative frame so before the introduction of this modifier whenever we wanted to size something in relation to some other container size for those purposes we would generally go ahead with either geometry reader or something complex like a custom layout but we know that they are not really ideal to use and not easy to implement as well so with this uh, container relative frame what it provides us with is we can adjust a view's width height or both in relation to its nearest container so in our case that nearest container is this lazy edge stack and since we want to adjust the width of our view that is the width of this image uh, in relation to this lazy edge stack what we can do over here is we can simply write container relative frame and we also have to provide access and we can also provide alignment as well since it is spanning over the whole width of our screen so we don't have to provide the alignment the default is center though but we can just provide the access because we want to only adjust the width of our image so we'll specify the axis as horizontal here you are not uh, able to see any changes but let's run this on the simulator and change the orientation of it now you can see if i change this then the width is automatically getting adjusted so that's the beauty of using a container relative frame okay now so this is fine now let's also give it a background color so let's give it our uh, carousel a background of say indigo 
Also, one thing that you can observe over here is all the images that we have are touching the edges of our screen, but we do not want to do uh, do that. We want some padding. So the first thing that comes to our mind to implement is to use some padding. So let's give it a padding of say 20. Okay, this looks good, but you can see that whenever we are scrolling, our image is not, not getting scrolled from edge to edge. They, are, uh, they seem like they are getting chopped off. In order to avoid this, we are provided with a modifier content margin. So when we use this content margins, we can specify say 20 over here. Now you would observe the changes. Now when we are scrolling, you can see that the images are getting scrolled from edge to edge and they're not getting clipped off. Now in case you want to just specify this content margin or uh, on the X axis. So you can specify the direction as well. For example, you can specify 20 and also specify the axis. For example, we can give it horizontal over here. So you would observe that only the margins are applied on the X axis. Also, if you change it to vertical, then the margin would be applied to just the Y axis. So the last thing that is left is to apply the animation to our carousal. So for that, we will use this modifier called as scroll transition. So what this does is it basically applies the transition as the view enters the visible area of the scroll view and as it leaves the visible area. So for that, it takes in two parameters into consideration. One is the content of the scroll view. Another is the scroll transition phase. Let's call it phase for now. And based on the phase our view is in, we can apply changes to our content. So let's say what we want to do is we want to scale our image a bit down when it leaves the visible area of the screen. So whenever our view is on the visible area of the screen, it is called to be in the identity phase. For example, this particular image, number one image is in the, the, its identity phase as it is right now available on the screen. So what we are going to do is we are going to provide a scale effect and this scale effect would apply to X axis as well as the Y axis. So on the X axis, when the phase is identity, in that case, there would be no scaling effect. So we will keep it one, but as it leaves or as it touches the edges of the screen, we want to scale it down a bit. So we'll make it 0 0.8. Similarly for Y as well, we'll specify the same. Just change it to Y and also put a comma over here. So uh, let's see how it is now getting uh, displayed. So you can see that as it is leaving the screen, its size is getting reduced. And when the image is in the identity phase, the scaling effect is not applied. Now the last thing that is left is to offset our view vertically by a certain number. So we are going to use offset over here. And what we want is when the phase is identity, we do not want to do anything. So we'll make it zero. But when it is about to leave that phase, we want to change our offset to 200. So you would observe the changes in our animation. So you can see that when it is about to leave, our position of the view is getting changed. So you can see how easily we built this really cool animation. So you can play around with it. There are uh, various improvements that were provided in the scroll view back in WWDC 2023. So you can have a look at the documentation and try to apply all of these things in your upcoming application whenever you are building a carousal. Also, one key thing to note in over here is all of these things that we have discussed, all of the new modifiers, they would work only for iOS 17 and above. So keep this into consideration. So that's majorly it about this video. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel for more such videos in future.